Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Mutual Broadcasting System presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called Three. Practically, nobody is named Sebastian. And I have taken in my lifetime a good deal of kidding about my name. Sebastian is an unusual name and a a great many amateur humorists seem to enjoy working on it. And when Evelyn Waugh's Bright's Head Revisited came out, at least seven of my friends sent me huge teddy bears. If you should happen to need a teddy bear... I... Uh, but I didn't come here to talk about teddy bears. I thought maybe you might help me. At least I can tell you. May I? Well, it's kind of... Uh... I suppose you'd say it's an obsession. Oh, well, on the other hand, I guess you have to have a thing quite a while before you could call it an obsession. This has only been bothering me since day before yesterday, so I suppose maybe we'd better call it a premonition. I was walking down the street, and there was absolutely nobody near me. And a voice spoke to me, right in my ear. A very quiet little voice. You just said one word. Three. Did you hear it? But he must have heard it. What was it? I tell you, there wasn't anybody near me. There, there wasn't anybody within a block of me. Well, I thought then I was, you know, hearing things. You know how it is. You, you think you hear your name called or something, and it's just some kind of subconscious thought that jars its way into whatever you're thinking of, and... Well... Maybe it isn't any of me. Maybe somebody does call you somewhere. Oh, I don't know. I suppose I might have forgotten it, except for one thing. I walked on down to the office and I went into the lobby. I stood in front of the elevator. The door opened finally. I got in. Another man got in behind me. He stood right in front of the door in the middle of the car. The operator started to close the door, and the other man spoke. Three. And it suddenly came. It was the same voice. And I was suddenly seized with the most dreadful fear I've ever known. I scrambled past the man as the doors drew together. Hey, look out, mister. What do you think? Let me doing? out. Let me out. Well, for Pete's sake, make up your mind, will you? I stood chanting in the corridor, watching the indicator above the door as the car went up. Two, three. We haven't found out yet what caused it. Apparently, though, the operator, who was a new man, mishandled the controls at the third floor, and the car dropped down to the sub-basement. No way of telling, of course, because the operator was killed. We think we're fortunate, however, that there was nobody else in the car. Did you hear that? There was nobody else in the car. Well, what about the man who said three? No. Nothing more happened that first day. I walked upstairs to my office, and I stayed there. I didn't do very well on the job that day. Oh, yes, I forgot something did happen. No, nothing like the elevator thing. It was just the telephone. It rang three times. At three o'clock in the afternoon. No, oh, I know there's nothing unusual about a telephone ringing three times, only this one. I picked up the receiver when it rang the first time, and it rang two more times. Telephones don't do that. That was all the first day. I went home very carefully. 
I remember I waited at the corner very conscientiously and until the number three bus went past. I'll never ride a number three bus again. I'll walk the extra four blocks and ride the number 12. And I was pretty conscious of that number. I saw threes everywhere. Three men in the restaurant. I began looking for threes. Three, three letters in my mailbox. And I found threes everywhere. Three pennies fell out of my trousers pocket when I was undressing. Three of those black wartime ones made out of zinc or something. They don't seem any in these. They, they look somehow sinister lying there on the bedspread. Three black pennies. And all of a sudden I remembered they used to put pennies on dead men's eyes. But then I thought, but there's, there's three of them. I haven't got three eyes. And you know what? I said to myself, I wonder. I wonder if maybe I, I have got three eyes. And I walked over to the mirror and looked. No. No, I haven't got three eyes. But you see what a thing like this can do to you? Well, that settled it. I went in the bathroom and I took down the pills and I took three of them. And I remembered just as I was drifting off that three pills are enough to put a man to sleep permanently. But I couldn't do a thing about it then. Oh, no, no. I, I didn't go to sleep permanently. I woke up. You guess what time. didn't sleep anymore. I sat up and smoked cigarettes. When it was daylight at last, I dressed and went out. First, though, I counted the cigarette butts. I'd smoked one whole package and 13 besides. You can count it up. And the street was deserted early in the morning. I walked past the movie house. The sign on the marquee said, last three days. I went down to the office. Walked all the way. I walked upstairs. This was only seven o'clock in the morning, mind you. I unlocked the door. And there were three men in my office. At seven o'clock in the morning. I just I just stood there and looked at them. Good morning, Sebastian. Who are you? My name is Lee, Sebastian. What are you doing in my office at this time of the day? Sebastian, this is Mr. Dix. Good morning, Sebastian. I said, what are you doing in my office? And this is Mr. Gay, Sebastian. Did you hear me? What are you doing here? Please, Sebastian. Will you answer me or do I have to call an officer? I think we'll put the desk over here, Dix. I'd like it better along this wall, Lee. You'll have to have a new rug and new draperies. Listen, you three. Certainly, Sebastian. What is it, Sebastian? Speak up, Sebastian. I want to know what you're doing in my office. Oh, that. Don't mind us. <laughs> of course not. Now, about the filing cases, Lee. I don't want them. Do you, Gay? I'm sure I don't. What are you doing here? Do you hear me? Why, Sebastian. We're just looking it over, deciding on the changes. We uh, don't like it this way. And what business is it of yours? What are you going We're to... going to move in here. You what? When you leave. What are you talking about? I'm not going to leave. Yes, you are. I am not. Certainly you are, Sebastian. Are you people crazy? Why, no, Sebastian. Are you? Oh, I... I don't know what you're talking about, and I... Sebastian, come here. Over here by the window. Come on. No, you're not going to get me to that window. I know what you're up to. I'm going to get a policeman. Oh, no, Sebastian. You're wrong. We're not going to push you out. I should say you're not. We don't have to. Of course not. Just look, Sebastian. I looked out the window. And right below me was the sign on the movie house I told you about. Big red letters, they said. Last three days. But I hadn't noticed before... Or maybe it wasn't there before. The three had a big red X across it. And there was a two painted on top of it. 
And when my eyes had focused again, I turned around. There wasn't anybody in the room but me. Yeah, that's right. The door was closed, and there's only one door. The only thing that was different from the way I'd left it yesterday was the calendar pad on my desk. And there were just three pages left on it. And the top one had a big red X crawled across it. I never took a drink in my life before five o'clock. I seldom touch the stuff, but I, well, I do keep a bottle in my desk for an occasional client who likes a nip in the daytime. I took two nips. And I got very brave and very matter-of-fact when I found the second one. Well, after the third one, I, I went out in the hall and I walked downstairs. The elevator starter was just coming to work. He looked at me with a very strange expression when the whiskey and I spoke to him in a loud voice about three strange men invading an office at seven in the morning. And then he asked me, more or less politely, to describe him. Do you know, I couldn't remember a single thing about any one of the three. He looked at me as if I were crazy. And I remembered what Dix had said. No, we're not crazy, Sebastian. Are you? I don't know. Maybe I am. A man can't be haunted by a number, can he? Or can he? You remember what I told you about being careful about the number three bus? Well, a number three bus rammed into a light stander last night and caught on fire. No, only, only one man was killed. I saw his picture in the paper. I thought there was something familiar about his face. And then it came to me. I walked over to the mirror above the washstand in the corner. Why, the man looked enough like me to be my twin brother. Or to be me, for that matter. What is this thing? So, so then I sat down at the desk and, and I thought some more. Maybe, maybe I've been working too hard. Maybe, well, anyway, i got to do something about it. Yeah, but what? I'll call up Dr. Mandel, I say to myself. Dr. Dr. Mandel can tell me if I'm going crazy or what. If you give me the phone. Well, let's see. What's his number? Uh, 4087. Good morning. May we be of service to you? Is this Dr. Mandel's office? Oh, my, no, sir. Is this 4087? This is the beverage funeral parlor, sir. The what? The undertaker, sir. Isn't this 4087? No, sir. This is 3333. How did I get that number? Well, I couldn't miss it that much. Four... O, eight, seven. Good morning. May we be of service to you? Who is this? You dial three 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 three, sir. This is the beverage funeral parlor. I'm sorry. I, I can't be that drunk. I'm sure going to be. Where's that bottle? This is the telephone company. Look here. There's an insane man who keeps dialing this number and telling me it's the wrong one. Can't you put a stop to it? For three solid hours now, he's been ringing this number. And we have clients of our own to take care of. Well, I don't care what you do, but stop that man. 
No matter what I dialed, it always came out three, 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 three. I called Dr. Mandel. I called the police. I called my Uncle Hubert. And always there was that man with a fat voice wanting to be of service. Good morning. May we be of service to you? That was yesterday. Today. Oh, yes, I woke up three this morning. There was somebody in my bed. No, I know. I'm getting awfully tired of these things happening to me, too. But you should complain. Well, they're not happening to you. All I want from you is a little sympathy. Or at least the chance to tell my story. Just tell my story. Sorry. No, really, I'm sorry. This stuff is beginning to get me down. Beginning? It's got me. I don't know what's happening to me. Either somebody's trying to make me lose my mind and commit suicide or something, or... Or it's true. All I can hear is three. Three men. Three. Three days. And now there's only one day left. And the second leaf of my calendar pad had a big red X on it this morning. And everywhere I go, I, things happen in threes. I hear streetcar gongs. I hear automobile horns. I hear knocks on doors. I hear noises in my head. And all of a sudden, I remember I heard on the radio that there's going to be a radio program tonight called Three. What are they doing to me? Help me, please. Do something. Please, please, please. Do you hear that? Do you hear the way I'm talking? Do you hear me? Sebastian. Look. Look, I can't stand it any longer. I've got to do something. It'll be, it'll be three o'clock in just a little while, and I know that's going to be the deadline. Well, I know it. So do you know it, don't you? Who is it that hates me? Who is it that's going to get me? Is it you? All right. All right, I know what I'll do. I'm going in here. I'm going to have a drink. Uh, you stay out there, all three of you. I walk inside. The bartender is standing behind the bar. Hello, bartender. Hello, Sebastian. How did you know my name? Why, you told it to me. I did? When did I tell it to you? Why, last night. Last night? I wasn't here last night. Well, this morning, then. Why, I wasn't here. I've never been here before. Oh, 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 oh now, Sebastian. You got a hangover? Oh, oh, I don't remember. Why, sure, you was in here with them three men. What three men? You know, all the fellas with the funny names. Funny names? Yeah, you know, all three of them with the three-letter names. Dix? Sure. Dix, Lee, Gay. The three threes. <laughs> when was this, bartender? Oh, three o'clock this morning. <laughs> I'm trying to pull myself together. I try. I try hard. But my... My head is all mixed up. I'm getting scared, bartender. What you scared of, Sebastian? Three. Three? Just three. Oh, that reminds me. What? A fella telephoned just before you came in. Said he'd be here at three o'clock. <laughs> Coincidence, huh? Who? I didn't say. Said if you wanted to call him back, call him at three, 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 three. Yes. Yes. I know who he is. You want a drink? No. No, I guess not. No? Just talk to me, will you? Sure, Sebastian. Till three o'clock. What? Your friends will be here then. Oh, I'm scared. Why? Somebody's after me. That's so. What am I going to do? Well, I don't know anything you can do, Sebastian. Look, talk to me. Talk to me. Take my mind off it. What'll I talk about? Anything. 
Anything except... Anything. Well, let's see. Talk. Talk, I'm scared. Well, let's see now. Well, now, you take names. Names? Sure, like yours, for instance. Sebastian. <laughs> it's a very odd name. I think I've only seen it once before in my life. Where? On a gravestone somewhere. Don't talk like that. Well, it is an odd name. It's unusual. Names have got a lot of meaning. Yeah, yes. Mine means uh, to be reverenced, I think. Does it? <laughs> Ain't that odd now. Ain't it? You still scared? Talk some more. I'm talking. What time is it? A little before three. Talk. Well, I'm talking about names now. I got a funny name, too, for a bartender. You have? For a bartender. What is it? You are scared, ain't you? Why are you looking at me so funny? Well, it's pretty near three. Bartender, what's all this about three? Well, I was going to tell you a funny coincidence. Talk. Talk, please talk. Well, you're so worried about this three Talk, stuff. will you? Talk, talk to me. Well, I, I was going to tell you about my name. Well, what is your name? Is it Joe or Tom or Harry or Charlie or Aloysius or Alcibiades or Mike or what? <laughs> That's what's so funny. It's dry. Dry? Well, that's, that's very funny. Well, that's extremely funny. Well, that's, that's funny, bartender. A bartender named Dry. <laughs> a, a dry bartender. <laughs> oh, well, sir, that, that sure is funny. <laughs> yeah, but of course, that ain't uh, the way you spell it, see. What? No, oh, you see, it's a German name. Is it? Yeah, sure. Spelled D R E I. It means three, you know. No more three. No more three. No more bartender named Dry. What do you suppose it was? I'm, I'm never going to hear any more threes again, am I? Oh, oh yes, I am. You remember? When the judge says to be hanged by the neck until dead, dead, dead. Listen to Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And others who played in tonight's story were Les Tremaine, Vinton Hayworth, Cameron Proudhon, and Kermit Murdoch. Music for Quiet, Please, as usual, is composed and played by Gene Parasso. Now, for a word about next week's Quiet, Please, here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Next week, our story is about a man who couldn't escape his fate. It's called Kill Me Again. And so, until next week at this same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. Quiet Please comes to you from New York. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.